Hey everyone, Gerard Scarpacey here, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community, coming to you live from New York City. I'm with one of my dear friends, Tatum Neal. Tatum is from a legendary hairdressing family, the Neal family, founders of Neal Corporation, uh, a distribution company that's been around for over 50 years, introduced some of the most incredible brands to their territory, and we'll talk about that history. They're also uh, salon owners, they own a chain of salons. Uh, in the Louisiana called Paris Parker and along the way they developed something called Salon Biz Software which I think a lot of you guys have heard of developed specifically for the success of salon owners and there's a lot of really interesting stuff that we'll talk about with Salon Biz and how Tatum and the company are using it to ensure success even within their own salon brand. So Tatum is an incredible hair cutter. I worked with him many years. We worked together at Arojo, uh, at Aveda. We've done lots of cool stuff and uh, the most current thing that we've done that's awesome is called Elevate Hair. Tatum's the founder of that. So we got a lot to talk about, but let's get into the haircut here. So Tatum, break it down for us. What do you have in store for Jarrah's hair today? Yeah, so Jarrah's definitely got what I would consider to be kind of a creative cut. This is not your classic client uh, cut, but I think there's going to be some elements in here that relate to behind the chair. Um, Right now what I'm doing is working in with some of her natural growth. Uh, I noticed in her notes, um, I keep sort of notes through Salon Biz and all my clients, that she had a few different uh, growth patterns that are a bit complicated. And so seeing that helped me remember that I need to kind of take special care there. And that's what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of assessing those growth patterns and making sure they fit in because this part of the haircut here, can you look up for me? This part of the haircut here is gonna sort of act like a pendulum and swing back and forth. But in order to do that, I have to make sure these sides just above the parietal ridge here fit into the sides of her head so that she doesn't have pieces dangling when it's on one side versus the other. Now, I noticed that you've chosen to work with the razor this time and that you mentioned notes. So is that something you put in your notes, like what tool you use? I know colorists will put their formulas in. What do you do within the notes? Explain that a little yeah, bit Yeah, absolutely. More. So, you know, I am a Van, uh, Van Counselor from Van Michael Salon is a big uh, mentor for me. And that's something that he really claims is one of his key elements of success is having notes on your clients. Much like when you go to the doctor, they take notes to see how your progress is. Um, colorists are really great about this because they're always taking notes about what color formula they did. But there's not a lot of note taking about the person's lifestyle, um, events, significant events, maybe they had, they got married or had kids, um, things like that, and that's what really, really Van teaches in his program. So when yeah. you're working behind the chair, you know, as a stylist, and you're working with the client, and you decide you want to, you know, you probably after you finish cutting, you want to make some notes. Yeah. How do you do it? Like, what what makes it well, practical? Well, so really, I, I use my app. So uh, Salambus has a great phone app, and I can enter those notes in immediately into the app, or I can sort of dictate them to an assistant, and to like, um, and they can do it depending on what so my day. So basically, like. just have your phone on your station. You like right here, you can see it. So my phone lives here. It's part of your setup. Right. It lives here. It's part of all my tools. And then I can just kind of uh, just go in and do notes. So here's a note here. I can view information. So this is actual notes on your, on your phone? Yeah, so here's like right here. I'll do this. So I can view info. And then it'll say, you know, cut to chin, you know, not jawline. So that was a client where we had, we, she was saying cut it to the. Because uh, her chin was here. No, she was, yeah, she was saying cut it to my jawline. Uh -huh. And she meant chin. And so she was like, you keep cutting it shorter. And we had this whole conversation. I'm like, oh, wait, you actually mean here, not up here. Right. And so I had that note just to refresh. Remember, so, it's hard. You see so many people every day. And you remember them, but you might not remember specific things. Like maybe they're growing the bang out. And then the next thing you know, you get caught up in the conversation, habit, boom, you give them another fringe, and they're pissed off. So taking notes is really, really valuable. It's one of the key things I use with Salon Biz, as well as all the like analytics. Like I want to know how much um, you know how much retail I'm doing what I was doing last year I want to sort of goal myself because I constantly want to grow and it helps me remember again like I might have gone out the night before I might not be really like into doing retail that day but if I know that I'm trailing a little bit or if I'm really close to goal the Salon Biz app helps me stay on task and helps me be successful all right so awesome we're talking about technology and how the Salon Biz technology the app the software helps you be a better stylist behind the chair now, obviously, you have to be great with your hands technically, and I noticed that you have a very beautiful razor technique there. Yeah. Can you spend a few minutes talking about the technique, the way you manage the tool, and uh, what, what you're trying to accomplish here on Jerry's hair? Yeah, absolutely. So for the, me, the razor is just as precise of a tool as anything else. 
Um, what I love about it is that it allows me to um, create texture and put in shape. So you can see there is a line here. I'm doing a round shape, and you can kind of see that move throughout our head, and I'm moving that round shape throughout the back to the front, right? Um, the technique, I relate it a lot to like a clipper, right? So I want that, that motion to be very consistent. I kind of think about it like I'm signing my autograph, right? So I'm signing my autograph, but instead of doing loops and, and movements like this, it's like my name is MW. MW, 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 up and down, up and down, and that consistency and that rhythm allows me to be precise. So I'm not chopping out the hair, I'm not scooping at it. I have a nice rhythm and it allows me to create um, some substance to the, to the line and perimeter as well as create a little bit of texture. All right, thanks for that. I'm going to give a few shout outs and then we've got some questions. So our good buddy Jeremy Hickson is watching. What's we always up? love your support, Jeremy. Uh, Erica Olivia Sanchez, hey, how you doing? She's saying hello to both of us. What's up? Our great friend Tracy Sakasitz is watching. Hey, Tracy. Tracy. Hey, Tracy. How's things going at the Academy? I'm sure they're incredible. We've got uh, Camilia watching from Bulgaria. Branimir is watching. Um, Bradley Kirkland giving a shout out. Thanks for the support uh, of Hair Brain. Bradley is uh, one of the guys who helps to run Salon Biz and and they've been a supporter of Hairbrain for many, many years and the Hairbrain Video Awards, and maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Of course, now, Sergey Zarenko, welcome. Lots of great questions coming in as well. We've got one coming in from Erica uh, D'Angelo Harwood, and she's wondering, how does the app help you measure your goals? Like, so is there functions in there, like as a stylist? Absolutely, so there, there's, there's basically a sort of a stylist uh, preference area where it tells you all your goals. Now, your goals are sort of created by your um, your manager, your, your and owner. again, we're talking for those who've just joined. We're talking about the Salon Biz app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what it does is every day it compares me to last year, or compares me to last week, or whatever I have it set to. And um, so when I look at it in the morning, it has all my analytics that I know where I'm at for the month, for the year. And so every time I look at it, it's prompting me to do that. So literally, you get up in the morning, you check into your app, you it's, look to see what your I goals look at are it the, the night day. before. I want to see who's coming in the next day. So if I get that crazy client, I need to have like an extra cup of coffee, and maybe a Xanax because she's crazy. I like that first thing in do the morning. You put that in the notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At two, two. Does pills, it make sense to have pills. an extra coffee and a Xanax? I, 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 I need. It seems like they would. Out. Yeah. It's kind of like a modern speedball. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so I like the night before the day, I've always liked to, to see it. And then things are changing. It's very fluid. So if someone walks in, my app alerts me. Um, for those who have an iWatch, it alerts you on your iWatch. And so, very so it goes right to your Apple Watch. So you've got the app on your phone. You've got it on your watch. Boom. The client comes in. Jara's here. And I can look at her notes. Scroll. Oh, I need to be mindful of her calic or anything like that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so we're here today. I'm Gerard Scarpacio. We're in New York City at Blonde Studio, which is where we film most of these HB Lives. We're with one of my dear friends, uh, Tatum Neal, who is the founder of Elevate Hair, which we'll talk about in a minute, and the first hairdresser in the Neal family, and the, you know, those of you that know the Neal family, they've been very much involved in craft hairdressing probably close to 100 years, right? Because it was like your great-grandfather that started Grandfather started in the um, late 40s, so about over 70 years. Over 70 years of, of bringing quality product to hairdressers, helping people grow their business. And on top of that, they're salon owners. We'll talk about that because Tatum's very involved in their chain of salons called Paris Parker. And uh, probably over a decade ago, they developed one of the first softwares for, for salons called Salon Biz. Yeah, 1984, we started working so with software. So two decades ago. Yeah, so, three, three. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, we were really curious about how inventory was working and how the business worked. You know, my dad was very influential in the industry because he was one of the first people, and this sounds crazy, one of the first people that, that thought that hairdressers weren't just high school dropouts, that, that hairdressers were actually successful, and if, that we could help them grow their business, if they could be more financially successful, we as a distribution company could sell more shampoo, right? And so that was kind of the, the concept. And, so you uh, treated hairdressers as, as potential business yeah, people? Yeah, some hairdressers are making millions of dollars, yeah, right? So you know, we're, not, we're not just high school dropouts. And, and he was one of the first people to believe that. And so that's kind of like the foundation of Salon Biz. We want to know, it's kind of like, the opposite of what a lot of softwares out there are. Most softwares are about the sort of the booking, like I need to put an appointment and everything is relates to how it's booked. We're from the inside out, we're more of a management tool. We wanna to know how things are moving and that sort of is the like the core of what we do is how does the business work, that's what moves us. Um, so it's a, it's a bit unique uh, in that regard. All right, so again, back to the technique because we're doing a couple things. We're talking about salon biz, the legacy of the Neal family, and teaching a, a great haircut using the razor here. So we're juggling a bunch of balls, Tatum. So I'm going to toss you another ball. Sure, go ahead. Um, 
I, I notice here that this really is diffusing into the underneath shape. You know, like you've doing a lot of subtle manipulation to get that hair to kind of blend in. Correct. Um, and you've got, uh, this is some pre-existing kind of fun ribbing that our friends from Hairfucker did the last time yeah. Jarrah was a model for us. Are you going to keep that as it is, or what's the plan for the next steps here? So I like to kind of work in compartmentalized pockets when I'm doing creative things. So I want to focus on one thing at a time. So I see it, it's there, I'm going to adjust it, maybe take some things away. But um, I like to work in that area while I'm thinking about it. I, like most hairdressers, are a little ADD. And so if I start thinking about all of this, even though I'm seeing it, it's gonna distract me from the task at hand, which is like what you said, which is kind of blending in this top portion into the bottom. So um, I'm not quite sure. I'm probably gonna do something in here to kind of erase that. She actually said this is kind of, gets a little, it's getting a little funky. It's been about a month old, so it's kind of bothering her. So I will take that away. Yeah, so just sure to be I'm clear, because some people are asking, those were like a pre-existing undercut that had some designs in it here. Tatum starting off on the top, and then he's going to deal with the undercut as we move on. Our good buddy Jeremy Hickson is asking how you get comfortable doing creative work. Do you have any tips? And you know, I know you've been a hairdresser now probably for less than 10 years. Is that right? No, 12. 12 years. Right. Time flies. Because I remember Tatum, I was working at the Aveda Institute when he was a student. Um, I guess it's a little bit longer ago than I thought. Uh -huh. So like, how did you, you know, as you go through the process, you learn your fundamentals, you learn basic shape. How did you get comfortable being creative? Um, That's Jeremy Hickson's question. I think the really the key is to to really understand your foundations because there's only so much you can do. You can do three things, right? So you can do lines, graduation, and layering, right? Um, and so once you're really confident in that, it's really about for me not getting caught up in the flow. I was taught so um, almost like like a robot how to do all these techniques that it's very easy for me to kind of fall into that technique and forget. And so compartmentalizing, like I just said, like breaking it down. I want to focus on this section, this section, this section, this section, and just doing that section, leaving it, and moving on to the next. That helps me be a little bit more creative. I also like to sort of work in these uh, what I call planned redundancies, meaning that I... I know that I'm going to take a corner off at some point, but I don't take it off yet. I build up the weight line, I build up the corner, leave it, assess, and then make decisions versus just, even though I think I'm going to do it, I won't do it. And that, sometimes little things are left that I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, and I might leave that. So that kind of helps. So breaking it down into compartments, leaving, leaving things, not getting ahead of yourself. So we definitely have a lot of love coming in and lots of friends watching. Joe Profita is watching. Yo, Joe. Hey, Joe. Uh, Erica Sanchez has a great question that I want to get back to. Our buddy Steve Statlin is watching. He loves your shirt. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So, Steve, next time you come to an Elevate Hair, you'll They'll be, be able there. to get some merch, some Elevate Hair merch. Um, uh, Raina Twigs, who works down in... Raina. In, yeah, she's watching. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the love and support. And let, you, let us know any questions that you have. So there's a question coming in from Erica Sanchez. It's kind of a big one. You know, she says that we're both huge on social media. Uh, thank oh, you. Nice. I think guess that's, yeah, that's become like a compliment. Thank you. Um, and what, what helps us stay focused on what our goals are instead of keeping up with the Joneses, especially while trying to keep your own social media image up? I'll answer first. And yeah, go I'll, ahead. So for me, you know, having been involved in this social media hairdressing world, kind of at the crossroads for a very long time, I had to make a decision a while ago, especially when, to be honest with you, it becomes a business and people pay you to post things and think about things. I had to make a decision about, you know, anything that we do through Hairbrained or through Gerard Scarpacy, the first question is, is this going to benefit a hairdresser? Maybe not every hairdresser because I have a certain taste level, Tatum has a certain taste level, we believe in certain things, but at the end of the day, if I post it, if I share it, if I talk about it, are there hairdressers out there that are going to benefit from it? And if I put everything through that litmus test, that's how I stay focused. Um, and at the end of the day, if it's not creating value for a hairdresser somewhere, then it's not something that I would ever share. Tatum, do you have anything you want to add on how you keep your focus on while you're dealing with this challenging social media world? It's a lot of damn work, and you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting to the point now where I need to start getting help. We just hit 30,000 followers, and um, it's a lot of work. And so for me... I get to really just focus on what I think is cool and interesting. Um, it's really a hairdresser platform. It's not a consumer platform. Um, and it's not really a salon-friendly platform to th for the most part. Like, no one's ever coming in and saying, hey, Tatum, can you give me a pink mullet? That never happens in the salon, unfortunately. I have to find those people. Um, 
But for me, I just get to focus on the aesthetic and um, just what looks good. And I try to keep my eye on the prize and I try to be very current. So I try to post things that are very good and I try to really um, focus on celebrating other people's work. Um, I've only posted about three photos of my own on Elevate Hair. It's really not about me and, and those photos have to do well. One of those photos is in like the top 20 posts of all time. So, which is also a very prideful thing for me because I know that there's, there's no BS about it. That's what the audience likes. So I just try to keep it creative, try to share other people's work. So uh, just for those of you that are watching that maybe aren't familiar, uh, the question was uh, about social media. If you want to follow what Tatum has creatively created on Instagram, it's El at Elevate Hair yep. on Instagram, and it's a great page where he's repurposing and, and sharing content from great hairdressers all over the world. And the goal of that is also to let people know about Elevate Hair, which is a live event that Hairbrained has been a part of from the beginning, something that Tatum founded, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. You can also follow Hairbrained Official on Instagram and, of course, here on Facebook, where you're obviously watching us now. Um, let's talk a little, so catch us up on the haircut and then let's talk about the Elevate Hair event. For sure. Um, so I'm just doing some classic scissor or comb and sometimes I prefer to use scissor or comb over clippers, although I use clippers as well, just because it helps me, uh, it forces me to think a little bit more small so I can't think about just blasting all this off. And so I'm kind of trying to create somewhat of a, a round shaping here and then I'll go through and clipper this up. And so um, I like kind of doing both and for those technical people, out there, look, I can do scissor comb too. Earlier I was showing you guys just with my motion, um, this technique around the ear. A lot of people str struggle around here. You have to kind of work on your dexterity, right? So I hold the comb like this, I push the ear back, and then I use the comb like so. And that allows me to get over the ear, around the ear, without cutting. So just kind of tapering in below those pre-existing lines that were cut in on Jerry's last haircut. Yeah. Uh, now you started with some razor work in the middle here and you've got the top section the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know we're gonna get to that in a minute, but while you do some detail work, tell uh, those that are watching about Elevate Hair, the events that, um, yeah. that we've collaborated on and that you guys are doing. I know we just had a great one in Las Vegas. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about Elevate Hair. Yeah, so Elevate Hair was really just um, I don't know. Honestly, Gerard is a little bit of a fusion in my mind of what teaching and teaching is, and what I could see of noise. I've never been to noise, but the first thing I saw was like, kind of just like Tim Hartley standing next to a DJ, and I was like, "That's awesome." I'm also a DJ, and I love DJ culture, and so I was like, "How can I fuse these two things?" So that's kind of like the show concept: hairdressers and um, and DJs. And it's uh, I have a silent sponsor uh, in, in Neil Corporation in Aveda, and so I, I don't have to sell anything there. And that allows me to keep it brand neutral, and so I can get people from all walks of life, different salons, different product companies to come and sort of be on a neutral territory. Um, and um, there's no talking, and so it allows for new artists who maybe don't have the kind of experience that some typical platform artists have, to showcase their talents. There's a lot of good artists out there, but they might not be the best speaker. So this allows them to get on stage and just kind of create something that they love. It's definitely a hairdresser show because you don't have to talk. You can just kind of vibe out, listen to the hip hop, and um, just create. And so it's, it's super fun. I'm trying to go to as many cities as I can to create a platform for local artists. Here's my favorite thing about Elevate Hair and why Hairbrain has supported it from the beginning. Um, it is a chance for, as Tatum said, someone to get up on stage maybe for the first time. It's also a chance for them to have their 10 or 15 friends there to see them do it and support them. And what we found that at, right from the beginning is we bring in big names, whoever that might be, a social media name, sure. get them on stage. I've done many of them. Um, and people would obviously like to watch us work, but they get so much more excited to see their friend on stage. And we started to say, hey, Tatum, why don't we just make it all about that? Yeah. You know, Most of the time, I don't even cut. I just go and hang out and have a beer and say hello to people. But it's great to see, you know, now if you get 10 people and they each bring 10 friends, now you've got this core of 100 passionate hairdressers who are there just to support their friends. And it sets the tone for the event. And that's why they're such positive, awesome, engaging events. Yeah, they're great. So again, if you're just joining us now, this is um, 
Tatum Neal, founder of Elevate, member of the Neal family, part of the Salon Biz brand and the Paris Barker brand and so many, many things. This is model Jara. She's been our model many times. She's a tattoo artist here in New York City. A great uh, tattoo artist. A great artist. tattoo artist. And you're seeing some of the remnants of her last haircut from her friend Kirill from Hairfucker. He carved in and tattooed some lines onto her haircut. And now Tatum is working with that undercut. Um, and then he's got some hair on the top to work with. So let's get back into the technique. And then I'd like to talk about Paris Parker and how it all comes together for you guys. Perfect, yeah. Your salon biz, Neil as a company, your partnership with Aveda, Elevate. How does that all come together? But let's get into the haircut a little bit now. So just doing scissor over comb and... Um I was a little nervous about it because she's got blonde hair, but it's actually responding quite well. I don't feel like it's like poking out too much, so I'm just going to keep on doing it. I love doing scissor over comb. It was one of the first things I was interested in in hair school. I just love the sort of being able to kind of zen out and just focus in that moment um, in what you're doing and just just be here. And so I like doing scissor over comb whenever I can. Um, it's very cathartic for me. It is. It's such a technical thing. And I've often said, you know, early in my career when I was teaching at Sassoon, and we, we even changed our program up for a little bit to actually start people off on scissor over comb. Like, you know, we used to start obviously with the classic one length bob, but that's such a, a difficult kind of a mental thing where scissor over comb is so pure visual it's, and technical. And it's mechanics too. Yeah, and it's like mechanics. that's, you need to work on that first. I mean, if you notice how I'm holding my scissors, you know, that really matters. I see a lot of people who kind of bite and you're never going to get a clean line like that so whenever I see a young hairdresser and I'm thankful for Tristan Morrison for telling me this in the very beginning you know focus on this work on your craft work on this and you can see how I can really move that shear and I don't have any movement with my fingers and that's really important if you're going to do anything good with scissor or comb it takes practice and it takes a lot of concerted effort you have to choose to be good at doing this you, it's not just going to happen and then you know even though it's extremely technical it's also so visual yeah. So you can't like, you know, be daydreaming while you're doing this. Your eyes have to be really Here trained. I am. I'm yeah. looking. I'm paying attention. Nothing else is going on in my world except for this, and that's why I like it. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the Paris Parker family of salons. Yeah, for sure. Um, and how it all kind of comes together for you guys there. And I know you have something really new and exciting in New Orleans uh, yeah. with your new studio. Yeah. Yeah, so um, this was really, you know, my dad was a distributor and the salon in Hammond, Louisiana, where our, our, um, our distribution facility is, was selling and asked my dad in 92 to, to, um, to buy it. And he had kind of gotten tired of Horace Reckelbacher and Van Council giving him, um, giving him stuff because he didn't own a salon. And so he's like, cool, I'm just going to own a salon. My stepmother at the time was pregnant with my sister Paris, um, Paris Parker. All of our names are family names. Um, Tatum is my mother's family, uh, my mother's maiden name, for example. So... She, uh, we named it after her, and I don't think we thought it'd be anything, but next thing you know, a few years later, we have like nine locations. Um, and it's really been great because we can really test out things, test out ideas for our customers, um, like Salambas, for example, um, and make sure that they function properly before I can tell a salon to do something. It's important for me to know that what they're going to do is going to work. And so it was really just a test kitchen. It's expanded, it's grown, it's a, it's a force to be reckoned with in the city of New Orleans. Um, and we just opened up a new studio right across the Ace Hotel, um, which we have a barber shop there as well. And we have a little studio upstairs called 633 Studio, and it's really badass. Beautiful lights um, that are built in, so if you guys want to come and set up, you can rent it. It's got existing lights, it's got a little bedroom, it's got a beautiful balcony. You can see the streetcar. Um, it's really dope. So now I'm thinking about her haircut. I'm going to just kind of assess it, um, spin her around, do a full 360. You can see I've got a nice little, a nice little fade over here going down. And I'm going to sort of play with that, this idea, this fade here. So I'm going to clip her into this area. I've got like a half guard on here. So again, Tatum's working here with some pre-existing design and color. Uh, and just kind of organically working it in. Yeah, and I'm really focused on her head shape and how that relates to the cut. Now, this area here, the little transition, I'm gonna go back to my scissors um, and I'm gonna blend that together. And certainly I could have done this all scissor or comb, but I mean, 
sometimes it's just like a time. I was going to ask you how do you how do you know when to switch? Is it just your gut instinct, or this has to do with length or hair type? You know, time. I book on a forty-five minute schedule, and as much as I love creative, I mean, like precision haircutting, sometimes I don't have time to spend three hours in a haircut. You know, I'm going to go broke if I do that. So I have to find areas where I can be efficient um, and 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 compromise sort of in the sort of the the technique a little bit without totally compromising my values. And so that's what I would do. So in here, I could take that away with the clippers, go back to the scissors. Um, it's really just a time thing. If I had three hours of this haircut with you guys, which I would love, um, I would do it, but I think I would lose all your viewers. So I'm gonna share a big question coming in from Harris Jack, and thanks for watching, Harris. We see your name on here a lot. Uh, it says, do you believe that you can learn a new haircut through a video and be able to carry it out confidently? It seems that most training comes from online facilities like Hairbrain these days. So yeah. I obviously believe yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think you, have, you, yeah, you do, of course, yeah. And um, I think that, honestly, that it's all about doing it. So if you're gonna watch a Hairbrain video, or any video, and you're just gonna absorb that and be able to do that, you're gonna have to actually practice it. And that's what yeah. I like what you're doing, is you're kind of yeah. in there, they get some of the insights of working with someone. I worked with Nick Orojo breathing down my neck, and that was important because if I needed to adjust my arms or, or anything like that, I needed someone to tell me that. I don't know that. I, ha I can't see myself. And so that's what I think is cool about your program is that you're kind of there with other students. Um, but my recommendation is watch these videos and then get a model and practice it. That's all yeah. I or, or get a mannequin and practice along with it. I mean, you know, I think Harris, maybe if you check out hblive.me, so these Facebook Lives, they're, for lack of a better word, cheap and cheerful. They're easy to tune in, easy to tune out, easy to meet great educators like Tatum. Now, first and foremost, when he comes to your town, you're going to feel like you know him already. And if he's doing a class or an event, you'll feel connected. So that's the first thing. But here's the reality that I've learned over 30 years in this industry focused on education. A lot of people don't visit your town. And you don't necessarily have the money to go and visit them. And even if you do have the money, maybe you don't have time because you have to say, well, I'm going to leave. I'm going to miss my daughter's cut. Uh, kindergarten graduation so I can go take a class with Tatum while I'll try next time. So we have to use technology to try to bridge the gap. Um, and we're almost there. We've got some exciting things happening on hblive.me that are going to take it to the next level. We've decided to change the way that we actually film them so they'll be completely vertical and fit on your phone because what we found, which we kind of already knew, was that everyone's using their phones to learn. Um, and we want to try to make it as interactive and engaging as possible. So I definitely believe it, but it falls to the learner to go out and practice. So let, let's get back, uh, Tatum, to the work here. Yeah, so I'm just trying to, like, I'm just being creative here. I'm letting my mind tell me what to do. I, although it never, you know, my mind's weird sometimes. So you see this, like, sort of blended fade here, and that's kind of moving down. This is a natural point in her hair. And so it's, my instinct was to just go through and square that off. But I thought my instincts. That's and looking I, cool, yeah. And I went to the other side, and then I was sort of inspired I don't know why, um, to kind of create a line coming across like this. I used my scissors, and I'm kind of balancing my scissors right here. I had an espresso right before I did this. I'm a little jittery. Um, and then I'm going to go back through with my clippers and refine it even more. Sometimes I like to use the scissors instead of the clippers to do this work, at, at least initially, because it allows me to be a little bit more curved, whereas the clipper it tends to be a little square. Just to balance. Nice. And I'm kind of coming up into this point here. So essentially what I did was I saw this, this part here and this part here, and I just wanted to connect the dots. Then I'm going to go through, and I'm going to kind of dig that line out a little bit. So lots of our friends tuning in. Stephen Statlin still here. Stephen, we're still excited to come out and do a little cut color co collaboration with you again. Lisa Van, who's a Lisa. good friend of... Uh, Tatum and, all, and myself. Lisa, nice to have you here. You can see Tatum's working on a bit of a creative undercut, kind of working with a pre-existing shape, see, starting to see it come together. And then he's still got you know quite a bit of length on the top to play with, so we're eager to see what's gonna happen up there. Now, why, uh, why this particular trimmer? I don't know, it just gets it really tight, you know? Um, I've worked with a few other trimmers and I think that this one just gets it. I mean, it's it's not bald, but it's really tight, but it doesn't pinch the hair. So 
What um, is that one in particular? As people are asking, it's the Andy's. I'm sorry, Andy's. I can't remember. Okay. The D8 model D8. Sweet. If you follow any barber, the odds are they're using this. Yeah, we see it a lot. Yeah. Uh, barbering was new for me. I've only been doing it for a couple of years now, and um, it wasn't really allowed in my training to 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 you to use the well this tool yeah but to use clippers no um, and so it's a new tool for me and I really am appreciating the craft of it you know I think there's something to, as far as craft barbering um, and so I'm really enjoying playing with it and just brightening up her tattoo here. <laughs> This little tuft, I'm probably going to take it away, but I don't know yet, so I'm just going to save it. This is a classic thing for me to do, is just leave stuff. You can't put it back, can you? You can't. So now we've got a little... Doop, doop. Can I'll do a little re-intro uh, re for those of you that are just joining us. Uh, this is HB Live. I'm Gerard Scarpacy, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community. Pleasure to be hanging out with my buddy... Uh, Tatum Neal today. Tatum is a member of the Neal family, legendary in the hairdressing world. I want to talk about that a little bit because I love the stories, you know, your dad and your grandfather were some of the first, first people to bring major brands like Paul Mitchell and Aveda. Yeah. They were some of the first distributors and I know as a kid you kind of uh, would go to parties and Paul and Horst would be there and yeah, so Paul would be sleeping on the couch somewhere. I, I Let's mean, hear one of those stories. Back, in, on. uh, back in the day, um, I, you know, my mom is sort of close to the vest about that, but Paul was the best man at my mom and my dad's. So wedding. Paul Mitchell was your parents' uh, my dad's best, best man. Best man. Yeah. Dad's best man. And my mom just said that she was constantly battling keeping her bridesmaids away from Paul's room where she was very vague <laughs> about what was going on in there, yeah. but I'm sure it was illicit and illegal. Well, I'm proud to say we were just at Paul Mitchell Gathering. Hairbrain was, and uh, the company's doing fantastic and growing. And you know, then at a certain point, Neil developed a really deep relationship with Aveda. Yeah. And now, uh, one of the one of the few exclusive remaining distributors of Aveda. Whereas Aveda grew, they began to do all their own distribution. They still work closely with Neil. And uh, how many states is it? Four or five states? Yeah, something like that. It's yeah. like Texas uh, to Florida, but. Um, yeah, my dad was actually the sort of a, a tree hugger, um, which I didn't quite realize. I coincidentally got my degree in environmental policy as well. Um, and so he really loved what Horace was talking about. And Horace was really talking about, initially, it wasn't so much about the earth, it was about the hairdresser. And hairdressers were t constantly touching products, and that just goes right into our skin, and we're breathing things in. And Horace was very concerned about this. And so he wanted to make products that were... Um, natural and that were good for the hairdresser and so that was sort of the the birth of Aveda and my dad was really into it and uh, that's kind of how it started and it's been one of the best things you've ever done as a company. Okay so now when I'm, I, I like that there's like a little bit of a, a weight line here you can kind of see that point I'm gonna leave that but um, I left a little bit of kind of this residual line here I'm gonna erase that so it kind of goes up like this. So again, working with some pre-existing lines and undercut here, um, some graphic details on Jerry's haircut. So a lot of skill within the scissor over comb and using a little bit of detail with the edge of a trimmer. Yeah, just using all my tools. And that's one of the best things that I've enjoyed as I've gotten older or, or more seasoned as a hairdresser is that I keep picking up new tools and, and, and using them. and. I like to use a variety of things. You'll never see me just pick up a pair of scissors. There's always going to be some other things to kind of make make the art happen. Will you ever use a thinning scissor anywhere to blend? It just depends on the application. I'm certainly I'm not a, a thinning shear hater. It definitely has an application. Um, certainly on, on short hair, if you're trying to create texture on short hair, um, I could sit here and yeah, do that forever or I can grab a thinning shear so um, I don't use it to hide my mistakes I use it exclusively as a texturizing tool and um, I think that's the I think that's the element that people get a little frustrated with is that oh I can just hide things um, and that's not my goal with a thinning shear it's really just a texturizing tool and a, a, an efficient one I want to give a shout out to some of our friends, uh, our buddy from Cro Croatia, Mr. Ivan Duda. Always a pleasure. We got to get back out hey. there and see you soon. Yeah. Uh, Tammy Savic is watching. Melissa Styles here. Hannah DeFalco. Lots of our friends. Thank you for the support. And uh, let's get back to talking about Elevate Hair because Hannah DeFalco just made me think about yeah. that. Yeah, Hannah did so a great job. She so did. Much. Yeah, she's like if you actually if you want to check her out. 
um, on Elevate Hair's highlights. I have all the shows we've done, and she's on there doing a really fun model. Uh, who is everyone was having a good time. You that was at our, the last New York. The Elevate last one Hair. in New York. Yeah, and uh, literally the last one that you just did was in Las Vegas about two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, how was the vibe, and who were some of the people that, that came um, up on stage? Sally Rogerson, Confessions of a Hair um, Hairstylist, Roderick Samuels, Lauren Moser. Um, um, I mean. Uh, a little snippy, Aaron Johnson, uh, my friend Billy Avalon Hair, who designed these T-shirts. Um, my friend uh, Ian, who runs Elevate Graffiti, which is kind of like a little graffiti platform. Um, he was there. He does all the artwork, and uh, he's also a DJ as well. Um, it was a big blockbuster cast, and everyone, go check it out. Everyone crushed it. It was amazing. And what's next for Elevate Hair? Um, shit, what is next? Oh, you know what? We've got... Um, we're doing our first party this weekend in Nashville, so this is going to be kind of wild. It's just going to be literally a party. Uh, so I've got some Elevate Hair DJs. I'm going to be DJing at this cool bar called Rosemary in Nashville. That's coming up this uh, this Sunday in Nashville, and then we're doing another one in New Orleans next Friday, the 17th. Um, I've got a couple ones coming up. One I'm really excited about is Elevate Barber, uh, which we haven't done this before. This is like a little bit of an experiment. Uh, but we have so many barbers who like to do the show. I thought it'd be nice just to do one that was focused on it. Um, we've got a lot of great artists in there. My friend Fern Barber is going to be around, so he'll be coming to the show. I'm still casting that um, right now. So that's coming up September 9th in Austin at a really great venue called the North Door Elevate Barber. Giving a shout out to our buddy Tristan Morrison. He yeah. says, looking good, dude. And Thank you, sir. you got a shout out earlier from uh, Tatum. He said that he learned some scissor over comb tips from you early in his career. I did. I want to bring it back to Salambes sure. um, and talk about now, Paris Parker, you guys have multiple locations. And one of the things that I've learned over the years is a lot of software has challenges managing multiple locations. Yes. Is that something salon biz can do? If you're out there and you work in or own a multiple location salon, can, can salon biz handle that? That's a real key point of difference. And the reason that we have that as an option where you can run uh, multiple locations is because at the time, Paris Parker had multiple locations. So for those, why that makes sense, if Jared comes in to see me at my downtown location in New Orleans and then she goes uptown to get color done, most salons can't communicate about that. So I don't know what her color was like, her haircut was like, what products she got, when the last time she was in, they're different platforms. Ours are constantly communicating, so she can literally walk out of my door and walk next door to another salon, and the communication is there in real time. And, you know, we were talking about this a little bit last night where I asked Tatum, I said, you know, now there's, like, so many of these, like, free, like, scheduling apps and things like that. I was wondering, you know, how that's been affecting salon biz, and he had just a great, a great perspective on that where you said you know it, it's that's not what salon biz is it's not just a schedule or explain that again yeah so salon biz it's built from the inside out so we're more concerned we're, we're hyper concerned about our analytics and what you're doing in the business so for most people for like a, a one chair salon you know you just need a little a booking service or whatever that's not really what salon biz is about certainly you can use salon biz and run analytics on yourself but our customers tend to be a little bit more dynamic, a little bit bigger, multi-locations, um, things like that. So it's not a big concern for us. There's always going to be little apps. There's always going to be cutesy little things. That's not, the, that's not our business. Our business model is people who are really concerned about their business and want to grow and be successful. Right. So the, the ability to book appointments is just baked in, but then to manage and grow your business, that's yes. the real benefit of working with it. Yeah. Do yeah. you want to be successful? If you want to be successful, you can't be just looking at your day. You have to look at right. your month, your year, your week. You have to look at things comprehensively and be working towards a goal. And that's what Salonis does. All right. So this is all coming together awesome. Tatum's been working on Jerry's hair here. I'm kind of redoing the undercut. It was done a, about a month and a half ago by our friends from Russia, Hairfucker. They had put in all these kind of fun lines. I think they call it ribbing. Ribbing, yeah. Uh, and now Tatum is just kind of changing that up and also kind of working with what's there. And then uh, then we'll see you move up into the top. It looks like you're getting close to that. Yeah. I should just stop now and take a break from the back. Yeah. Um, and get us to the top. You can kind of go it's crazy looking at all there. these things. Um, a little bit more, bring you the camera there. So the idea here is that if she wears it this way, these pieces here were falling down and now they're not anymore. So she can be able to wear her either way. Uh, I'm gonna cut it on both sides and kind of create, you know, essentially recreate this pendulum which has gotten a little bit 
um, lost. So I'm going to take straight sections. A scissor or a razor? I'm going to do the razor, All the right. new hairbrain Good razor, choice. which I love. Let's get, a, let's get a shot. I just brought a beautiful gift in for my buddy Tatum. This is the new hairbrain handcrafted wooden razor. You can see it's a beautiful pale uh, ash wood. What we've done, for those of you who had wooden razors before that have cracked, we've, we've added a, a bar of silicone inside. So if you've had a beautiful wooden razor before and it's cracked, that won't happen here because of the silicone. And these take feather plie blades and they're available at hairbrain.pro. Yeah. So what I'm doing, you can kind of see how her growth is. It grows forward. So I'm not going to comb this back. I'm going to comb it in its natural direction, natural fall. I like to say I'm going to cut it where it lives. So I'm coming straight out. Nice tension back of the blade or the heel of the blade as some say and I'm just going to kind of work that from short to long. I lose tension right past my knuckle so I just let that go. How does the balance feel for you on the razor? It feels really great. You did a good job with this. And it's got a little bit more of a tapered silhouette so where you it feels hold nice it. feels nice here, yeah. you know. This can be a little bulky on some razors. And you know, I think over the next couple of years we'll probably few, do a few different editions of wood, but we wanted to start off with that minimalist kind of pale white wood. So any tips, so, you know, if you want to describe the type of razoring that you're doing right now, what the effect is when the blade is at that angle, what are you trying to create? So I'm trying to create um, structure and I'm trying to create texture at the same time. So what's neat about the razor is depending on how you engage with the hair, whether you're flat or on edge, it changes how the hair comes off and what's left. What's nice about the razor is you taper the hair, the bottom, the end of the hair is slightly finer than the middle and that kind of breaks in the haircut immediately and it gives it a feel that isn't an esoteric concept it's not a feel it literally feels different and once you have that clients can't really get that anywhere else you can't get that with scissor and that makes you a little bit more high demand and a um, sort of a resource for your clients so we mentioned a little bit earlier that um, you know thanks to the support of Salon Biz over the years um, we've grown a contest that we do annually called the Hairbrain Video Awards yeah. Um, and we are in, going to be in our sixth year this year. We just um, solidified the location. We found an amazing club here in New York City. We needed a bigger location. Yeah, you did. So yeah. we've done it for five years at a place called Arena. Now we're moving over to a place called Rumi, which is uh, right by the Fashion Institute, a brand new facility. It's got all LED screens, like floor to ceiling, which wow. is awesome. awesome. Um, and we're about to start. Pretty soon we will start to um, announce the... Uh, the date and when the tickets are available to attend and then the contest it's itself It's about uploading videos that you've created for hairdressers uh, We've got a website called hairbrainvideoawards.com where you go and you upload your video We put them through a panel of judges and we come out with winners in five or six different categories uh, Because of the great sponsors that we have we're able to give the winner for video of the year $5,000 uh, award and all the other categories get $500 and then we have an incredible party. It's IBS weekend which is March 10th here in New York City. Tickets will be available soon um, through Hairbrained at hairbrain.pro and you can learn more at hairbrainvideoawards.com and soon we'll start to promote where you can upload your videos. We don't like the entry process to be too long but generally, right uh, at the end of the year, we'll have a, a month or two where you can upload all your videos. It doesn't cost anything to upload your videos, and it enters you automatically into a chance to win. All right, so it looks like you finished the razoring on the top. I'm going to turn it back over to you. Yep, so I'm just going to do this uh, new Aveda Texture Tonic. It's so, it's so badass. It's a sea salt spray. It's got a little sugar in it, so it actually has a little bit of a shine to it. And it's got a great fragrance. I'm trying to get some texture into her hair. She likes volume. Um, and this is my go-to, even with short hair. Um, I use it on my hair, I love it. I'm um, gonna just kind of power dry this. Be really quick. I'm just kind of moving the hair all around. Tell us about the, the, uh, the blow dryer and the brush. I know that that's the new blow dryer you guys are working with. Yeah, uh, it's a Parlux Allion. It's like the new, Kind of badass blow dryer. I really love Parlox. Also, Twin Turbo is a similar uh, brand to them. They have the same engine, same motor. Um, um, it's just really powerful, lightweight. It weighs a pound, um, and it's something. And they're super colorful. 
Uh, and it's been a great tool. We just How many different working. colors is that coming in? I think eight different colors. Blue, pink, uh, some really cool, uh, like a matte black, a, a silver, and like a kind of a, a chrome-ish color too. And then brush-wise, what are you working with? This is a vest brush. I can't remember where I got this orange one from. Uh, that was a Sassoon exclusive. Yeah, we did right. have them at Hairbrain Pro for a while, but they were made exclusively for Sassoon. You know, I... Um, I was a Denman fan at first, and I, I still like Denman, they're a great brush, but for some reason everyone that I was kind of connected to, the Sasunis, were really into uh, into the vest, and so well, I got it. If you do a lot of wrap drying, the benefit is it's got little these balls. little balls, little balls that, so it doesn't scrape, and it's also a bit curvier. Yeah, so you get a deep, you get a, <laughs> a, a bendier bevel when you're beveling. And those are available at hairbrain.pro. If anybody wants to try a vest brush, one of our very popular br brushes. So what do you have in store here for the styling? Is it just going to be wrap drying, or do you I see you have some irons? I'm going to wrap in. dry, and then I'm going to get in there with a crimper. Going to zhuzh it up with the crimper? Yeah, just to give it a little bit of a... Wow factor. Yeah, it just it creates a little bit of extra texture, a little bit of extra volume without having to do anything. So as you dry a little bit, can you uh, talk to us a little bit about, about the New Orleans vibe? You know, um, I, your company, the Neil brand, the Neil family of brands, uh, is kind of based out of New Orleans and around New Orleans. And you've just opened up a new kind of creative studio there with through Paris Parker. So tell us, what's, what's happening in New Orleans these days? Well, the cool thing about New Orleans is New Orleans is really... Everything is cool about New Orleans. Yeah. It's, it's the epicenter of culture. If you Except think, for the temperature. Yes, yeah. it's not cool right now. In fact, when I got off the plane, I was like, oh, it's nicer in New York. It's hot in New York, but nicer than in New Orleans. It's the epicenter of culture. So if you think about the history, like where jazz came from. It came from New Orleans. That jazz eventually turned into blues, into rock and roll. Um, that blues and, and, and rock turned into funk which turned into hip-hop. And so everything that is culturally significant in the world right now, especially in regards to music, really has its roots in New Orleans. And so That is quite a statement. That, that's that's a proud New Orleans boy. Everything that's culturally significant has its roots in New Orleans. I like that. Yeah. I like that. And Own so, it. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a stronger hair culture down there. So with the studio, our hope is that we can get people from all over to come and create work inside our studio. So let's talk about that. So you literally, you guys, um, you opened a new barber shop in the Ace Hotel yep. in New Orleans, and then across the street there was a building available, and you guys, you, you took that building on the first floor, you put in a new Paris Parker salon. Yep. On the second floor, you put in a creative studio yep. with like psych walls and all this kind of stuff like we have here, where people cool. can come down and make content. Correct. That's so, exactly. and, and you're saying if people want to, they can come and do that too? Yeah, so I mean, obviously it's it's for rent. Um, I mean, Gerard, you can come for free. Thank uh, you. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's for rent, it's very reasonable, and there's like some core elements there you need. Uh, you know, there's a bed, there's a... You need a bed in the studio. That's, well, so you can actually, I can stay in the studio. You can stay in the studio. And just make content 24 hours a day? Yeah, 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 yeah. I like um, this idea. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And... Um, our hope is that the more people are there and working in the studio and engaging, that um, that that creativity will resonate throughout the city. So a lot of love coming in now that everyone's seen it for New Orleans. Melanie Moses loves New Orleans. Oh yeah. Judith uh, Paquette says really cool. She loves it. Shauna says love this. Yes. Yes. Thanks coming in. Super coming in. Uh, D da Yang is watching from Taiwan and hoping for a Chinese translation. Maybe one of these days, Dai will be able to do that. Or Da, sorry, I might be pronouncing that wrong. Did you play the same drug? I thought we did. Maybe it shut off because it's been sitting for a while. Not, right, I'll turn it back on. I was going to say it's a very subtle crimper. Yeah, not crimping. Is it not turning on? Because we, maybe we plug it on this side. It should, it didn't. So let's see if we can get some juice on this. Oh, uh, yeah, the blow dryer. Must have turned it off right now because this is off. Go right into the yeah. uh, Here we go. That one. Come on. Cool. Yeah. Um, so just made a new little Elevate. Our, our combs are really limited edition. They're not, and they're expensive. 
Um, but I have the graffiti artist do like a little elevate hair thing for us. What's the relevance of the graffiti to elevate hair? I noticed you're doing all your logos that way. And <sighs> honestly, I just love graffiti culture. Um, I, I've been DJing hip hop music for um, since 1999, and I used to think I wanted to be a graffiti artist, and I didn't really want to get arrested. Thank you, sir. So and now I know you're going to be DJing at the Aveda Congress this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about everything. We're today. talking about everything. Um, yeah, Aveda Congress is happening, and they asked me to DJ, which I'm super excited about. So I'm not crimping the ends; I'm just crimping underneath. Let me let go for a second. And what that's going to do is create a little bit of extra texture inside and allow for it to like kind of pop up. Um, yeah, so they they're doing like a jam, which is kind of similar to Elevate, but it's definitely more branded Ele uh, Aveda. Um, so it's different in that regard. But uh, yeah, they asked me to DJ, so I'm super proud. Um, and and for those who really maybe filthy, they, dirty music. I they're unfamiliar, uh, Veda Congress is kind of a global gathering of uh, people from all over the globe that use Aveda. There'll probably be uh, upwards of four or 5,000 hairdressers, and uh, Tatum gets to kind of DJ at the party, yeah, yeah. and there'll be some cool hair being done as well. Speaking of cool hair, I've got a main stage, and my friend Gerard's going to be joining me on main stage. Yeah, super honored. Those of you that are attending Congress this year, Tatum, on behalf of Elevate Hair and, and the Neal family, has been asked to do a stage presentation, Then he asked me to come up there with him. So I'm proud to say it's my third time presenting on stage in Aveda Congress. I know for a fact none of them have been quite like this one because they were much more uh, buttoned up, so to speak. But knowing Tatum and his kind of love of uh, what's new and fresh, he's got quite a strong, fun presentation in mind. It's going to be It's really going to be really badass. Fun. And for those of you that can't attend, I'll eventually get some video out there. But there's still tickets available. They just opened up um, more tickets so you can get there. And so look, so she had all this existing color. Um, I'm not a colorist, so... Um, and I was actually, but I like color and I like paying attention to it. And so this haircut, it allows for those little highlights to look and look, give her more dimension. You know, it's not just to be like streaky. So a lot of love coming in. People love the details and the texture and everything, the way it's coming together here. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm, again, the texture isn't so much about, oh, I want to see that it's crimped. I'm, I'm trying Support. to provoke the hair, yeah, and give it a little bit of foundation. So what you're seeing me do is assess the hair and see where I feel like it needs a little bit more oomph. A little more zhuzh. Yeah, and then I go in and I grab that kind of around the root level. Oh, our buddy Frank Mussolino just joined us. Frank, you missed a good one here. We're hanging out with uh, Tatum Neal. Next time Elevate Hair comes to New York, we got to get Frank Mussolino on stage, too. Yeah, we definitely so should. So let's, let's make that a date, Frank. Yeah, uh, let's do it. Do we have a date? Yeah, I don't think we have a date for we the next We don't, but after, um, after um, Interquafier, I'm going to try to do one. So that's like maybe in November, early November. We, we need to one. talk because we've got a lot of fun stuff planned for Interquafier. So if we can get it all collaborated. You know, I think, guys, that, that's the maybe the overarching message here. It really is about finding your tribe and collaborating with them. You know, Tatum has his things that he's working on. We at Hairbrain have our things, but we always find a way to come together. You gotta find your tribe, and what I say, find your tribe and love them hard. And that's what we do. We try to collaborate, and the support of brands like Salon Biz and Aveda has made such a difference for us. And you know, I think what's changed now is they support us for what we do, and then we're just thankful to them um, and help to just share that love, as opposed to maybe just kind of doing exactly things specifically only for that brand we get to do fun things like these hp lives and elevate hair and that's kind of how things have changed yeah so it looks like let me say something about yeah, that right now i'm just kind of texturizing just kind of freehand texturizing um but you know i think that there needs to be certainly brand is important you know and you gotta you kind of have to support the salon that's supporting you and the brands that are supporting you i'm not saying you shouldn't but i think that we kind of lose some of our power um, by not being connected. You know, everyone gets their hair cut. If we wanted to share a message with the entire world, we can do that in six to eight weeks. It's really powerful. But before we can do that and realize our potential, we have to be able to communicate. We have to have a venue. So I think it's important for hairdressers to get out of their box and do something that's not in their world. If you're a Paul Mitchell person, you should come to the Aveda show. If you're an Aveda person, you should go to a Paul Mitchell show. There's a lot of great talented people out there. I'm the luckiest visit. guy in the world because they go to everybody's yeah. shows and get to work with every hairdresser. And draw your big inspiration there, actually. And I'll tell you what, that was something. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just kind of dressing it a little bit for, for show. Um, I like this kind of like movement here and then this little bit of hair here. 
So I think that's kind of cool. I'm definitely going to take some pictures. Awesome. So we've done a great creative undercut inspired by what was here before and taking it to the next level. Done some great razor cutting through the top. We've talked about a lot of stuff, guys. So we've talked about the um, how Salon Biz can help a hairdresser grow. Yeah, we've talked about the Neil legacy. We've talked about Elevate Hair, <coughs> the Hairbrain Video Awards, and of course, haircutting. So why don't you share us your little finishing uh, techniques kind here of, and wrap it up for us. Just kind of dusting that off just a little bit, just kind of freehand. I just saw it and it decided to change it. I'm just going to get it for a little neck. So you got a tattoo. And maybe while you're wrapping up, Tatum, you can let people know um, where they can follow you and where they can learn more about Salon Biz, yeah, so as well as Elevate. Go, if you go to my page right now, at Tatum Neal, there's a link up to Salon Biz. You can check them out if you're interested. And as a, as a business tool, I strongly advise you check them out. Um, go to at Elevate Hair. And uh, I love talking to you guys. So if you want to do a show, um, just send me some of your work, talk to me, and we can make it happen. Just lining up here, let's bring out that. Just again, creating a little bit of extra lining here. And this is really right here for her, so she doesn't feel those little hairs touching her ears, which I know people go insane about. Then at the front, I'm just gonna do a little bit of extra detailing right here. Bracing the uh, clipper here, so don't go into that area. Devils in the details. Yep. And the dollars are in the details. Yeah. Dollars. You want to stand up for us, Jar? I love it. Thanks again for being a great model. She's been a model for us so many times over the past year or two. I don't have any hair left. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go grow some hair. Yeah. Thank you, Tatum Neal. Thank you, Salon Biz and Neal family for the continued support of the Hairbrain community. And peace out, guys. We'll be back real soon with lots more education and inspiration.